Is Elon Musk out of control? And is Twitch flexing in sexism? 2018 is starting to get really spooky, guys, and it's trying to force me back into a cycle of depression. Luckily, I have my beat twice daily anime titties, so I think I'm set. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to the first ever It's Neroku podcast. I wanted to bring you guys my thoughts and commentary with as little edits as possible. So go ahead and play these videos while you work. Maybe put them in the background when you shower or perhaps let the sweet sound of my sexy voice lull you to sleep. But without any further delays, here we go. Billionaire, business magnate and investor Elon Musk is reportedly stepping down as chairman of Tesla. According to sources in a $20 million settlement with the SEC or Security Exchange Commission, Musk must resign as acting chairman of Tesla for the next three years. This stems from an investigation that alleged that Musk attempted to manipulate the actual value and perceived value by adjusting fraudulent public information. The tweet published on August 7th reads as follows. I'm considering taking Tesla private at $420, funding secured. According to People Magazine, a like Stella magazine that I like totally read all the time, the initial tweet immediately sent Tesla stock soaring. But almost two weeks after Musk's initial tweet, Musk and the company clarified that Tesla was indeed staying public. At least five Tesla shareholders have filed lawsuits after they suffered losses in response to the tweet, according to CNN. On Sunday, the SEC announced their settlement with Musk, who was relinquishing his role as chairman and paying a $20 million fine. While it sounds severe, the settlement itself is a favorable outcome for Musk. The SEC originally wanted to ban him from being the CEO of any publicly traded company. On Monday morning, just one day after news of Musk's departure as chairman, Tesla's stock was up by more than 16%. Now, I did edit this excerpt from People Magazine in order to make it far more legible. Because, to be honest, this was originally a nightmare to read. I honestly don't understand how journalists write nowadays. Full of nondescript dashes and commas, listing last names over and over again it's quite a challenge if you ever have to read it out loud in an age of add adhd and emojis i'd honestly expect nothing less what the article then goes on to say is that elon never secured the funding to take the company private and this means that he could have been attempting to manipulate the value of the company's stock by providing people with false hope that a company with a track record like tesla was going to go private he essentially defrauded investors and got some emergency funding Honestly, I'm not really sure what he was attempting to do, nor do I have proof that this is in fact what he was doing. To be honest, do I think that he has the capacity to make false claims to save his business? Yes. Do I think he did it essentially to get some free money? Mm, probably not. He's a smart man with almost $20 billion. There is no way that if he wanted to, he couldn't just buy Tesla in full. So, so the portion of them saying that he never secured the funding is kind of BS. He could have bought it all himself if he wanted to. I don't want to accuse him of anything or insinuate anything by it, but $20 million is a small price to pay if you're looking to fund speeding up the Tesla Model 3 production or maybe start production on the Tesla Semi or maybe the Tesla Roadster 2 or maybe get the prototyping done for the Tesla pickup. You know, you got to get the ball rolling somehow. And if the money is tight, make more money. So back to the story. What were the consequences? According to the mutual agreement that's in the settlement, Musk is allowed to retain status of CEO for not only Tesla, but remain the CEO of SpaceX, Neuralink, and he also has some controlling interest in the Boring Company, which is owned by uh, SpaceX and Solar City, which I believe is owned by Tesla. What this means is that while he may no longer technically be the head honcho of Tesla, Daddy Musk still has a guiding hand in the future of Tesla. This is because when he was a chairman, he was elected by the company's board of directors and technically is responsible for presiding over board meetings. And he ensures like the meetings run smoothly and remain orderly. Basically, it's like that stupid student president role that the teacher's pet always worked super hard for for no reason at all. And he was like in competition with no one but himself and maybe that overachieving girl who did nothing but pretend that she was better than everyone else in class. You know what I'm talking about? The one who just, you know, the one who did everything just so she can get into a decent school to get a worthless degree like, I don't know, psychology, maybe sociology or some bullshit like that. So she can just get a dumb job like writing for People magazine and keeping a dumb dream for dumb people alive. And all for what? 
a job in journalism where your primary objective is to either run a smear campaign style tabloid that no one but your kind cares to read, or so you can repeat the same nondescript writing agenda of worthless political antics and everything that the rest of the world tries to enjoy without you coming and ruining it for us all. I don't know. Tough choice, right? Where was I? Sorry, I got distracted there. The chairman, right. Uh, so the chairman gets appointed and he gets to decide who is in charge of the company. So he gets to pick the CEO and so on and pretty much is the one who is pulling the strings behind the scenes. The CEO is the highest ranking executive officer in a company. It's the primary responsibility you know, for the CEO to uh, make major corporate decisions, manage overall operations, and maybe manage the resources for a company. Basically, they act as the main point of contact between the board and the rest of the company. So the CEO is a representative from the board that helps direct the company. You see what I'm saying? So Elon's role changed in nothing more than honestly just its name. He paid $20 million in fines. Keep in mind, he's worth almost 20 billion. So so that's like what? 0.1% of his total net worth. Okay. So yeah, you guys really punished him. You guys did such a good job. A true victory for the SEC. This basically means that nothing will change for Tesla except for the fact that now Elon could get quote unquote fired, right? But at the end of the day, essentially changes nothing. The best part is that everyone already knows this because the Tesla stock went right back up after the settlement was announced. People aren't stupid. They realize that Tesla wouldn't be Tesla without Elon. And as long as he is there in some way, shape or form, Tesla has a secured future. And honestly, I'm not mad at him at all. It's as a matter of fact, I can't be mad at a true hustler like Elon. Elon is playing on a level that we can't even really comprehend. It's really funny when people try to sue him or criticize him or his decisions. Like the man has defeated all odds. You know, look at the companies he's built, you know, by all means, they should have failed. Look at how he's de-aged, okay, after going through his first divorce, you know? He even did what LeBron James couldn't and regrew his hairline when there was no hairline left. This nigga <gasps> built fucking rockets. He wants to put high-speed tunnels under the streets of Chicago, okay? And he built and sold a flamethrower just for shits <gasps> and giggles. Most people refer to him as like a real-life Tony Stark. But he's more like a real life Dr. Doom. And to me, that's just much better. Even after all these times, he still continues to win. Obviously, there's doubters. Not trying to fanboy out too much here. But, you know, there are those who really say that Elon's been slipping up lately. When they say Elon's been slipping, they typically cite a few different things. They say he's been working an average of 120 hours a week. In an interview with the New York Times, it was reported that he said this past year has been the most difficult and painful year of his life. He repeatedly accused a British cave diver that went to Thailand as a pedophile in, on Twitter over and over again. He went to war against the mainstream media earlier this spring. He smoked weed on Joe Rogan's podcast. It's reported he tried to have a, a threesome with Azalea Banks and ran and conducted business while tripping balls on acid. So... This stuff just sounds crazy when you break when you break it all down. There's a lot to unpack there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and try to see if I can guide you through this one thing at a time and refute what I can when it's obviously BS, right? So working 120 hours a week, I, this is believable. Musk is in charge of several companies and projects, right? He has a lot of fires to put out and he might just be the only person in the entire planet who can actually do this type of work. Many people have compared him to Tony Stark. While this may be true, there's no telling how much stress this man is under. He is expected to not only run his business as well, but to conduct himself in a particular public fashion that is honestly better than the way I would conduct myself in public, make time for interviews, phone calls, etc., and then still care about the feelings and the way he, he, he talks to other people. That's just something I know I would be able to do, right? Elon stated that the New York Times falsely reported on his interview with him. He said that he didn't shed a tear. He didn't break down. The most that happened was that his voice did crack. So I guess this means that at the end of the day, he's probably not a robot. He's been sued for tweets involved with the SEC. His statements against the alleged pedophile diver, you know, that whole situation. He's being sued for that. And so, yeah, there's all that great stuff that's happening. 
behind the scenes in his personal life technically not his business life he may have honestly forgotten how to unwind and how to properly relax like a person should you know working that much that consistently and building such great billion dollar empires taking control of these industries Elon Musk is definitely a force to be reckoned with. So I'm not saying that he definitely did something or that he didn't definitely do something. It just leads to my response. The biggest the biggest issue that I want to refute here is the issue that we had with him smoking on Joe Rogan's podcast, right? So, okay, just bear with me a second. There were responses of people saying that since he was on the show, he was essentially a representative of Tesla at the time, meaning that he was quote unquote working so when he was drinking he was essentially drinking on the job i've heard that you couple this with the fact that he clearly smoked pot meaning that he is unhinged and reckless and needs to be stopped he's at his wits end and elon musk is clearly insane right i'm not going to try to bring politics into it but i think that there's something to be said for both the leftists and conservatives alike you know there's faults on both sides there the leftists we'll start with the leftists right the leftists protect those who fall in line and jump when they're told since early this year, when uh, Elon went to war against the mainstream media for exaggerating details of a crash involving a Tesla autopilot, he ended up defending Trump, saying that there is some truth to what Trump is saying about no one listening to the mainstream media. And so the fake news issue, you know, basically there was tweets about that. And so when Musk tweeted about that, making a service that he wanted to call Pravda, which is like Russian for truth or something where sites could be rated based on their accuracy, nonpartisanship, and their truthfulness, this didn't really sit well with the left-leaning, biased mainstream media like MSNBC, CNN, HuffPo, you get the idea. Basically, Musk is now on their shit list. Obviously, I don't really have any solid proof of this, but you bet your bottom dollar that if someone else were drinking a little whiskey or smoking a little weed in california where it is legal mind you the left would have defended him if he were let's say a football player or maybe if he was black you know stating that it's legal in the state of california no one would have made such a big deal about him being a ceo of a big company or being an important person or being a celebrity or anything so please cnn msnbc chill out with that bs please i i try to be nonpartisan when i can right I consider myself a libertarian. I prefer liberty and freedom over regulation, bans, and restrictions. I don't want anyone to tell me what I can't say, where I can or cannot go, what I can and cannot do, okay? I'm a hardcore fan of you can do whatever you want as long as it doesn't impede on the rights of other people. Republicans, conservatives, it's now your time to hear it. You guys need to relax too, okay? I thought the SJWs were bad enough, but you guys are talking about revoking his special clearance with the fucking air force like you were investigating to determine if his clearance should be removed because what because he smoked a little pot did he break any laws that's all i wanted to did he break any laws can you can you take him to court can you arrest him for breaking any laws no so then you guys need to relax as well honestly this is this is why i'm glad that chubby mcfatfoot professor cobblepots aka penguin ted porn star cruz didn't win the, the candidacy for the republican party because he mentioned that he would enforce marijuana laws on a federal level Th that's ridiculous he would force the individual states to to recriminalize um, marijuana usage is which is absolutely ridiculous it's sad really it's almost like we're going back to the stone age i i, I begin to think what's next the reefer madness 2 produced by disney i don't, I don't know so I'm going to stop talking about politics. You know, I want to talk about the last couple of accusations or a pair of accusations that are thrown Elon's way with Azalea Banks. So many of you may not be familiar with Miss Banks, just like I was. I had to Google her and that's not me throwing shade or anything. I'm just saying, like, I didn't know who she was, so I had to figure it out. Apparently, she's a rapper, singer, songwriter, actress from New York, from Harlem or something, some bullshit like that. And her most favorite song is 212, which apparently went viral in 2011. I'm not familiar with it. It has over 160 million views on YouTube at the time of this recording. And I'll go ahead and play a little bit of it here. Do you rag too, son? Nigga, you're cool, a dude. Plus, your bitch might click it. Wonder who let you come to 1-2. What'd you do to crew, son? Fuck are you into, huh? 
Niggas better be run, run. You could get shot, homie, if you do want to. Put your guns up. Tell your crew don't front. I'm a hoodlum, nigga. You know you were two ones. Okay. Trash. Honestly, straight trash. Like, I cannot, I don't know what she's going for. If it's like trying to be grime, like a like a UK grime type of music. Is it club music? Is it rap? I have no idea what the hell that was supposed to be. Okay. I'm not a rapper or anything. I don't consider myself a rapper, but that was straight garbage. I wouldn't take any type of advice from her as a recording artist. I don't like the sound that she went viral for that she's popular for. That is trash, honestly. According to like People's Magazine and other sources, Azalea Banks alleged that she was invited to Elon's house under the pretense that she was gonna be helping his big titty goth girlfriend, Grimes, do some recording. Like they were gonna work together, right? She says that they never got around to recording because Elon and Grimes wanted to have a threesome with her. So this really, really begs the question at this point, why would Elon want Azalea Banks? I mean, the guy is worth over $19 billion. We've been over this. And, oh wait, have you seen her? I mean, I'm not saying she's ugly, but I'm not saying she's a baddie either. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too, I, was like, I particularly don't have the hots for Grimes either because Grimes kind of looks like the love child of Smeagol and Kratos. I'm just being I'm just being real, right? But riddle me this. Why would Daddy Musk want not one, but two subpar women to share his bed? I've already established the guy is practically a supervillain just waiting for his opportunity to arise. Okay. Why would he want this no name rapper, this 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 Michonne lookalike playing beauty pageant to essentially have a threesome with him and his and his current girlfriend? Let me, let me speak clearly so that way you guys can understand exactly where I'm coming from, right? Elon Musk used to date Amber Heard, right? Nice. Then, then, okay, he married Tallulah Riley. She's an actress and a model. Clearly, the man has some good taste. He, he's not blind. He can see, okay? As a matter of fact, he married Tallulah Riley twice. Twice. They got divorced and then married again and then got divorced so yeah he knows what's up right he's not stupid he's not blind he doesn't have i don't think he wants i don't think he wants azalea banks but i'm just, you know i can't say for sure this is all hearsay i don't know the guy i don't i can't speak for him but i i just i don't get it you know the the, the man's worth 20 billion dollars billion with a b okay i think he can pretty much get any woman he could ever want so you mean to tell me that after knowing all these things about him, that he wanted you, Azealia Banks? He wanted to have a threesome with you. Really? What about your other claim, right? You said that he was reportedly on LSD while conducting business. This guy, who, when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, didn't even want to smoke weed all that bad because it said it impairs him and he likes to stay sharp was conducting business while on an acid trip the same elon musk who is in charge of like five different businesses yeah okay i totally believe you that definitely makes sense to me so that happened speaking of thoughts i i guess no one was actually speaking of thoughts but twitch is flexing in sexism as hashtag twitch thoughts are on everyone's mind the Amazon-owned company dabbles in bias as it shows preference towards the best money makers with the best, let's call them talents. Shout out to The Quartering, It's a Gundam, and L of the Day for breaking this story for me. Links to those amazing commentary channels will be down in the description below. I suggest you guys check them out. They're all hilarious. They all have some of the best news breaks of all time. Really, check them out. So I've personally done a video on booby streamers, hashtag titty streamers before. That was about a year ago now. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys remember this video. And if I remember my points correctly, I said I didn't necessarily have an issue with the booby streamers. I didn't have an, uh, uh, an issue with them existing on the Twitch platform. I believe in supply and demand. I love capitalism and I love the free market adjusting to what people want to see. I didn't necessarily blame the streamers for taking advantage of a lucrative career opportunity and an easy way to make money. I more so put it on the guys, right? It's the guys who support them that give away all this free money to women who would never give them anything in return for the value that they're giving them. What is that? 
squats, watching them exercise. Maybe they'll shake their boobs, but you're not going to really get anything out of it, right? You're going to give them all this free money and get nothing. It's honestly really sad. So then I followed up with the addendum video, tips for sad, lonely guys. It was a way for me to kind of help direct the sad, lonely guys amongst our population to use cheaper resources, more, more money efficient resources, you know, kind of rhymes with born mug, you know, to go to specific clubs, um, maybe uh, uh, save up that money, go visit Southeast Asia or places where some things are legal. I don't really know how I can beat around the bush anymore When you guys are giving money to these women in this way, it's kind of creepy, really. It, it kind of is. You'd be better off buying a fleshlight, okay, and and, and want a, a hand warmer, okay. That's better for you, bud. Really, or maybe warm up, warm up some lube in the microwave for yourself. That's better for you because at least you can get a, a value out of your money. What are you getting by giving Pink Sparkles twenty bucks? Tell me. What are you getting by giving zombie unicorn money? Actually, I wouldn't give zombie un zombie unicorn would have to pay me for me to touch her. She would have to pay me. I just not I don't go for that. Like bully hunters bullshit. Uh uh. No no no. You're gonna have to pay me. So this is now where I have a problem, right? You guys can do your thing. You know, Twitch streamers and booby streamers. You guys do your thing, right? But there's there's a problem that's happening on Twitch lately, right? There's a a blatant Twitch bias that's happening right now where Twitch is is bending the rules for their higher earners, right? AKA the good money, right? This includes streams such as Zombie Unicorns, Pink Sparkles, Alinity, uh, Armoranth, Sensen Bear. You know, th these are, are streamers that are known to break some, if not more than a couple of Twitch rules and have been given very minimum punishments or or completely held to a different standard for reasons it's not re ever really explained why they get to get away with some of these rules these rule breaks right there's unequal application of the rules i'm an egalitarian okay i believe in complete 100 percent unadulterated equality of the sexes that means same prison sentences for both men and women that means same punishments for both men and women that means same pay for the same type of work all that great stuff right same pay for same work doesn't mean same earnings okay obviously there's there's an inequality of earnings on the twitch side but you don't hear guys complaining about that that's because these girls are bringing in the bigger numbers therefore they earn more money don't let a feminist tell you about that though right regards i'm not going to touch on that too long because i don't want to get i don't want to get too political but basically what what the unequal application of the rules is allowing it's it gives the misuse of twitch streamer and partner guidelines to be broken in cases where particular earners who make a lot of money for the platform or is basically female and pretty means that you you get special treatment if you have a dick you get no favors right there's been banned streamers such as the aforementioned quartering t few siren cove who's a girl right she's a woman she's been banned in train wrecks have been banned for i'll just put them under general violations to terms of service basically if you're a man you get a ban this also gets extended to to those girls who don't really have a huge following because if you don't have a huge following you're practically a man because you're not bringing any good money in for twitch right Another issue I have with them is 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 when they when they're selling adult candy to babies. All right. Think about it with the introduction of like Twitch IRL. OK, Twitch is making too much money to care. Right. They don't mind that they're practically selling softcore content to minors. Sure. They have a mature warning. Sometimes you have to sign in. You have to. Sure. Yes, I've seen that. But who does that really keep out? I know that there's people who are completely underage who are still able to see this content, right? How is you giving me a digital check of some sort that tells me to put in my birthday or to register my account as, you know, whatever age I want to stop me from seeing certain streams? These streams contain body painting, squats for subs, boobs for subs, working out, 
or just general thoughtery, right? And the best part is some of this content is even sponsored, right? And this is, not I'm not giving my, this is not, it's not credit to me. Credit goes to L of the Day, The Quartering, and obviously my boy, it's a Gundam. These guys are in the trenches doing the hard research for me, okay? Because I'm not a huge Twitch watcher. Doing the hard research for me. And they have this, this, this crazy, crazy information and they're relaying it to me. And I want to make sure that it gets spread out as much as possible because we might have an opportunity here to save Twitch, right? I'll, 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 I'll tell you that about it, but I'll, I'll tell you about it later. But basically some of these videos are sponsored, right? And it's not family friendly and it doesn't have to be because money. Hello, I like money. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money. Then there is the lies, slander, and blasphemy, right? Siren Cove, I mentioned her before as, as one of the streamers that got banned. She's a cam girl, right? She's a YouTuber, gamer, and a personality that's known for her kind of more raunchy, down-to-earth, raw commentary, right? She's, she has a fierce attitude. She's funny. It's, it's, it's awesome to have a girl who isn't playing dress-up all the time. Just a girl who's honestly just down-to-earth and cool. She's at, uh, at Siren Cove on Twitter. That link will be in the description below, obviously. She currently has about 60,000 subscribers on YouTube, and she talks about a variety of, of exciting topics. I think that her videos are very entertaining, right? So I would suggest you guys go ahead and show her some love on YouTube. Tell her that Neraku sent you in the comment section. That helps me out, helps her out, gets her some love. Everyone's happy, right? But basically, Twitch has become the world's biggest high school click, right? Bitchy girls joined Twitch to make a quick dollar and couldn't give less of a crap about gaming, couldn't give less of a crap about gamers, or really what's happening on Twitch as a platform. It's pretty much all about the money. If there's someone who is preventing you from making money, you shut them down. And that's exactly what's happening here on Twitch. Okay? That's precisely what's happening to Siren when she started um, streaming on Twitch. I have a clip here I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Of service they have every right to ban cam girls that aren't doing camming content on twitch but here's the funny thing here's the fucking spicy part it's wild to me i have defended i have fucking defended titty streamers so much so much i'm like who gives a fuck dude if they're doing softcore camming ah who cares i care now I care so much. I think it's fucking funny that I get so much discrimination and treated so badly online for doing porn. And so many other girls do too. Unless you're really fucking popular, dating someone that's really popular, have like connections and stuff, you're treated like fucking trash. You are treated like fucking scum. Especially if you aren't making that spicy little pay mark that people think justifies doing porn like oh you're not making a thousand dollars a night why are you doing this kind of bullshit but i think it's fucking funny that i have to deal with so much bullshit girls have to deal with so much bullshit from doing porn and uh these girls are literally softcore cammy they're literally softcore cammy a lot of them talk shit on cam girls and they're like, I'm not a fucking cam girl. All I do is do this on Twitch and the little boys come. Like, I think it's fucking funny that you can sit here and basically profit off of the back of women that have to go through so much bullshit. You got all these ideas from cam girls. You stole all this bullshit from cam girls, but you get to do it in like a nice safe space and people love you and think that you're not a fucking slut and you don't get discriminated against jobs twitch isn't gonna ban you unless you're showing your fucking pussy and even then there's girls who get away with it for like a really long time a really fucking long time and i'm just fucking over it dude. i believe that this is happening because twitch is trying to figure out exactly what it wants to be okay it's evolving and that's fine However, it's not okay to pretty much sell yourself as chatterbait light and allow for some of your more popular, let's just call them popular users to talk down to or talk about or hum humiliate or, or uh, report smaller streamers in the platform in, in order to get them 
kicked out and pushed away. We can't have this type of abuse happening to streamers who legitimately want to separate their content and actually have a legitimate family friendly stream, right? If you watch Siren streams, which she's not streaming anymore, thanks Twitch. If you watch her streams, they're pretty chill. Like she's just playing the goddamn game. You know, she's she's just a cool person. You do really find it hard to believe that people are watching girls who aren't showing anything. Are you serious? There's so many, right? I gave a shout out to, to, to plenty of these girls before in the past, and I'm not afraid to do it again, right? Okay, there's so many girls out there who aren't showing anything, who are literally just there for the games, who are literally just there to build a fun, entertaining community, right? And Twitch is literally shitting on them. Twitch doesn't care. It cares about making money, which I'm, obviously as a business, that is a really big concern, right? That's a huge concern as a business. However, you do have to consider that maybe by pushing forward some of your other creators and, and giving them the, the tools to succeed, you could maybe make even more money. So, you know, check out my girl, Nixflix, obviously going to be my number one recommend for Twitch. Then go ahead and check out Siren Cove. Check her out on Twitter because I don't really think that she's going to be on Twitch anymore. If not, go ahead and sub to her YouTube channel. Like that is definitely a must, right? Back to what I was saying. The more popular users talk down to and uh really kind of like degrade the reputation of smaller smaller uh smaller channels smaller streams you know by calling them uh, camp girls and saying oh i'm not a hoe i'm not a i'm not a cam girl this is technically a violation of twitch's terms of service right you're not supposed to talk poorly about other streamers you're not i don't even think you're really supposed to mention them at all not unless it's in a very positive way right but this seems to be a rule that's okay to break if if your following is of a more intimate size, it's okay to break that rule if the following isn't big or, or if, uh, if if you're not one of our top earners, you know, people can talk crap about you. I think it's time that Twitch makes a positive change, not for my sake, because I'm not a Twitch streamer, but for the sake of better competition on the internet, right? The absolute last thing that I could want as a content creator or anybody who's a content creator is want for, for YouTube to be the only competition in the game. We need YouTube to have competition. We want YouTube to have competition. And Twitch was that for a long time. YouTube got really, really scared, right? But there's no one else. There's no one else. So Twitch, can you please get it together? It's it's those same sad guys that I mentioned before. The guys who are paying for the streamers, the guys who are, are putting these streamers on and, and, and being really honestly pathetic, for lack of a better term, are the ones who are on the Twitch staff right i don't want to name any names but these are the white knights right these are the neckbeards the incels the nice guys who obsess over these booby streamers right they provide bias and favoritism in hopes of getting their pp hard from an ounce of attention or recognition from a twitch thought i think i might have to specifically make a separate video on this problem specifically the white knights these guys in the twitch community but you know Pro the problem with the white knights or something i don't know in some ways i i kind of feel bad for them because there was once upon a time where i was kind of like them you know a time before i digivolved into a long dick chad and started slaying mad roblox puss my guy so yeah that happened anyways guys that's gonna be it for me for now comment your favorite twitch thotty instagram hottie or industry baddie below to help me with conducting some future serious scientific research. And tell me if you think Elon's honestly losing it. Is he more of a Tony Stark or more of a Victor Von Doom in your eyes? What did you guys think of my first ever podcast? If you like this video, go ahead and give me a quick thumbs up. If you hated it or hate me, that's okay because I kind of hate me too. But you should you should probably leave a thumbs down or something, you know? You can't have me slaying way too much poon, right? I got to save some for the rest of the world. Don't forget today's sponsor, Bard Self-Lubricating Catheters for all your cathode needs because they simply have the best self-lubricating catheters around. Bard none. I, can't, I couldn't even say that one. <laughs> okay, subs if you want to see more Nerecu and I'll see each and every one of you thick AF mofos in the next video. Peace. Don't forget today's sponsor, Bard Self Lubricating Catheters for all your catheter. I can't even say it. Because they simply have the best self lubricating catheters in the.